Hi, everybody. I'm Lisa Bebo. I'm Gail Rankin. We are going to be talking to you all about the live scribe. But before I do a little of that, I have to do a bit of bragging. I'm welcoming you to our new space. We're very, very, very excited. There's some things I don't understand. I don't know about the space still. Um, some of which were just how to turn the lights off. <laughs> we're learning as we go, but we're very excited and very, I think, relieved to have a space where we can really fit all of our students and just, I swear I won't plug my office all too often, but I just want to kind of give you a quick rundown of what we do in this space. We are very fortunate to have two, uh, four, excuse me, private testing rooms for students who need that. And now I can have the testing center where 13 students can test at one time. And some of you are friendly faces who I've seen before and you've all witnessed what it looks like in my office when we have finals and we're squeezing students and keeping confidentiality and making sure no one has the same test next to one another. And it was quite the complicated situation. This is going to be a dream come true in a couple of weeks. So thank you for letting me share the space and kind of talk it up a little bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me, we did choose to do this in the Disability Services Office. However, LiveScribe is an inclusive tool, a tool that really is going to work for many, many of the students for a variety of different reasons, and we'll go through why that is. Um, but this is a, a tool that we've been using for a little while in our office, um, so we're excited to share that piece with you. Something that came up from last, um, the last presentation we did was that I missed missed the opportunity to ask you all to introduce yourselves so everybody knew who we all were. So if we could just do that this time, so I'm not um, remiss. Um, sure. Start with you. Um, I'm Lee Rohde, and I teach over in the School of Education in the Grad School for Special Education. And we're doing assistive technology tonight, so I'm very excited to see how this goes. Andy Fogel, School of Nursing. Sanjay Jain, Accounting and Finance. Hi, I'm Kurt Bauman, working in English. Hello, I'm Derek Barr with the Center for Teaching Innovation. I'm Brian Kember. I work here in Disability Services. I'm Hannah Kelleher. I'm a grad student in the Higher Education Program here. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to give you a brief description of the pens, and hopefully a lively discussion will I'm ensue absolutely. afterwards. So you all have a pen in front of you. It all has a name. It matches the book, and it's just because we're keeping them together that way. But these computers, these are computers. They are pens. You can write on a piece of paper with them. You'll see that it works that way. But more importantly is if you look up at the top and you put these little black lines facing out, there's a power button. And at the top, there's a power cord and a little connector. So these are, in fact, computers. And what they do is when you're using them on this special paper, they will take a picture of everything you write and record everything you say. And then when you put them to the computer, which is easy as a, U a quick connector, it will upload both of those items for you. Okay? It's powerful because we can actually get a version that would then use it on an iPad or an app in that way, so students don't have to buy the paper. The paper has evolved so we don't have to buy the notebooks anymore, but the two together are a very powerful combination. Something that's noteworthy, um, the system works on a barcode process, um, you know, certainly with just about everything being on barcodes. This has been very exciting. We have been talking about smart pens in my world for many years, and we had not found that piece that made this work, and the barcodes have been that magic. Right. What is really cool, um, you can barely see it. I really have a tough time seeing actually where those dots are on that notebook paper. But with the evolution of the pen, the second generation now, um, when you buy the pen, the software package comes with it, as well as the notebook itself. And you have the ability, once you've downloaded the software, to now print that out. So you can buy one notebook with the package, and if you so choose and have a good printer, you can print them out. Many of my students do that. They have great printers. They're coming with binders full of this paper, which is kind of cool. It takes out that whole, oh, ugh, I'm out. What am I going to do? Um, so that's kind of been a nice thing. It also helps with organization. So I love that we have that flexibility with the paper. So why would you want to use it? We have a couple of examples up here. Um, easy review is one. It makes it very easy for a student to review. You can transfer the whole lecture, or we're going to show you how to put it into chunks, and it allows the student to come back to a particular point and just read that one area over. Many of our students have been using this. A lot of our students um, are buying it at the bookstore. It is available there. Um, you can use your financial aid, book voucher, monies, um, Mass Rehab, which is a world that we work with. 
does cover the pens as well as our veteran services. We're seeing a ton of our veterans using the smart pens and coming into our office to ask for some quick training um, or what have you. It is fantastic for so very many reasons. And how our students are using them is there are two options. You can use it and record an entire lecture, which is wonderful. Most of our students aren't doing that though. They're recording it in chunks as Gail was talking about and that is a fantastic thing that you can do where if you look at the bottom of your notebook you'll see all of the instructions on how to use um, the smart pen and when you're chunking you just start, you press record, you start writing. I often will do a star or an alphabetical letter. I write the information that I want chunked, then I press stop when it's finished. I then go to the next area, make a B, continue on after pressing record, and that's how it chunks it. What's neat is when you upload it, the student is going to, and we're going to show you this all as we go through and you're going to do it yourself, but the student will get to see their own handwriting, their own notes, and they will have all of the audio files chunked. So if we're working on cell division, and we're missing cell division for some reason, that there's a concept there that's not working, we can go back and just press A, where cell division was talked about, look at our own notes, and listen to the lecture by the faculty member. And then when they're thinking about that, they know we ooh, just got started. One so you can sit over by a curb or anywhere this path. And when they're typing it in, it comes in on their own handwriting, so it's not changing their visual acuity. It's really, it's just so exciting if you think about all of the ways in which you can use this. But that's the one I'm seeing my students use um, more frequently. So we're going to go ahead and show you how it works, and then we're going to try it out, okay? And I have, just so you can see right here, I feel like I'm at a carnival. I wrote these things down, um, and I was showing this to my 88-year-old parents. Um, and when you just turn it on, you're going to see that it, gives a name, it's very hard to see very far away. And all I have to do, I wrote this two days ago, is go like this. And what you can barely hear is the whole conversation that we had while I was writing these things down. Now you can hear me mechanically writing along because I wasn't sitting in a really good place. But you can hear the entire conversation. That was two days ago. And when I'm done, I can just hit stop. If I wanted to record something now, you see across the bottom are all the records all the commands that you have. So all you do is you press on record and it will start to record and I can, it's taking down what I say now and I can write one and I can say that today is Thursday and I can't do this upside down but number two I can say that I uh, would be Friday tomorrow nothing fancy and when I'm stopping it will stop recording and when I put my mouse back on number okay, one it brings back the entire conversation. Thursday. And when I'm and done listening to it, I can hit stop. And as she was talking about chunking, you're writing one thing along. If you stop, take a break, then you write the next item and you start again. Then they have those little pieces. Now, when you're starting to think about this, you have to think about the world's worst course you ever took in class when you were in high school or college that you didn't do particularly well at. Mine is calculus. I really loved math until I hit calculus. But if I had had this, I might have understood calculus a little bit better. Because then I could have heard what the teacher said. I could have redone that uh, section that I didn't understand. I would might even see a value to a negative I if you ever take calculus. That's an important thing, and I never really found value to that. I never understood it. I would have liked to understand it, and this would have helped me get through calculus much better than I actually did. So we want you to try it out. I have a slightly different pen from you, but all of you have the power at the top. It's like a little smiley face with a line. You want to turn it on. It should immediately come forward and say live scribe. Be ready to go. And on your papers, oh, if you've got the cap on, you have to pull the cap off at the end. It takes a little bit of time. Yes, thank you. You really have to pull it off. It's not easy to just get off. The cap is critical. Okay, I find I have to put my thumb underneath it and pull it off, the pen, off that way. Okay, has everybody got the cap off? Mm -hmm. All right, so find a piece of paper in your book. And if you're using the little book, note that the commands go across two pages. Mm -hmm. All right, so some of the things on this page are like record and jump and then position, whereas different items on the other page. One of them, which is the volume of the pen. So we're going to get started, we're just going to click on record. I want you to write the number one in your name, number two, the town you live in, and then I want you to hit stop. Okay, go back because we'll show them that stuff. Yep. 
And then I want you to practice it. I want you to actually go back to number one and click on it and see if you can hear yourself. You have to talk while you're doing this. You can't just write. So if you didn't write while you were talking, you've got to go. But I bet they got you doing it. Probably. I heard you. Then I want you to stop. So now you got to do it with your voice. I'm listening to the lecture in class. Well, okay, we're so going to give you something too. We're right. We have something from a TED talk, a, a little snort, short snippet. Hello, world. Now you have to put it right on the ink to hear it play. Right on the ink. Right on the ink. So isn't that easy? Mm -hmm. Once you get used to it, it is such an easy tool. And it's, again, and you're, I can't wait to talk to you all about what you're thinking once we get through this about how you could use this in the class. There's so many applications. And it's, th these are little minor points, but I think they're worth the saying. Many of you, I'm sure, are hearing the scratching as you're going on. Some of the students that I've worked with have found the scratching to be um, a little distracting as they're going. It's hard for them to hear um, the voice. I had mentioned that to a student that I was working with that's very good at using this pen. And he said, oh, Lisa, I don't bo it doesn't bother me. I said, well, how? Why? And he said, oh, I just use my earbuds. Mm. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm confused. What do you mean? And he's like, well, you know, the earbuds, because you can talk on them. They've got a little microphone in them. So I attached that. He's not putting the earbud in his ear while his lecture is going on. He's just putting that attachment there. That is making the um, amplification much away. better, right? And he's getting a much better. He solved the problem. I have learned throughout all of my years of doing this. I certainly ask my students, especially with assistive technology, how do I do this better? And they always have a better alternative that I would have never thought of. So you know, earbuds. But they do sell an extension that you can buy um, to make that work easier too. So you don't have to be right up where the lecturer is. I, in fact, just came back from a conference where I was listening to someone talk about concussions and TBI, and I was using the smart pen during that session, and I was very far back. And it worked really, really well, because there are some settings. As you can see in the front of the book, you'll see, and this is a little snapshot picture, but there are some things that you can kind of adjust it, so you can adjust it for what type of room you're in. I will caution you, they're not perfect. I think as we see generations of these pens going through, you'll start to hear the elimination of that scratching. But that's still, using those buttons will get that um, clarity just a little bit better, which is kind of nice. Right. And the, just another anticipating question. Um, the notebooks that you buy are not necessarily this size. This is just one of the choices. So there is a five subject notebook choice. There is a single subject notebook that's more traditional. Then there's the smaller ones. So if you're journaling or you're needing them just for notes <coughs> to go to the store, these are there for you. So it's a nice variety. Kind of fits in. If anybody chunks their information, I want you to go back and try first pressing the first place and hearing that lecture. Then go to another section and see if you hear it come right to that <coughs> to that new area. There's no play button, it's just touching it. You have to touch the record and yeah, just touching it, but you have to touch right on the ink. Okay. Is it that the speaker's behind me? Does the pen know where you are because of the relationship of the line to the dot? Yes. Yeah, it's a barcode reader. It really yeah. is a hugely yeah. tiny, yeah. tiny, tiny barcode. Yep. How many hours? Ah, good question. Now the one I have is two gigabytes. The amount of uh, capacity on the back is lit on the very back of the pen, depending on the one you have. I have one called the Sky Pen. You have the one called the Echo Pen, and there are a couple of differences. The one I have doesn't allow you to use the desktop, and we're going to show you the value of the desktop. This goes directly on the Wi-Fi, and will go to Evernote or to Dropbox. So if you're on the road and you're doing interviews and something like this, this has a lot of power. So for me, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. But after I use this one, I would have to tell you that if I was using this for class, I would probably prefer the Echo Pen. And we want to show you why. Okay. So when I'm ready to, to upload it, it comes with a cable, not unlike an iPhone, for all of you who have an iPhone. USB on the bottom, little quick connector at the top. And once you plug it in, we're going to show you that it will start to transfer information. And Brian very nicely gave us this great thing to look at. So when it connects, what you're seeing here is we can choose which chunk of our lecture that we want to take and move over. 
All right, so we'll be able to say, I want to have that one that's in blue. And then when it comes up, this is me doing this yesterday, or Tuesday, yesterday actually. So it's my terrible handwriting. You get all of that, lucky you guys. Um, but then it's right there, and we can click to any one of these items. One of the things I learned when I was doing this is that I take notes a little bit after where the teacher is. So she says something, and I think about it, and I think about what I want to write down, I write down what she said. So in order to hear exactly what she was talking about with the Chicago study, I have to go up a little bit. But that's me learning how I take notes. But now that it's here, I can save this as a PDF, and I can upload it to Canvas. And the PDF can be voice activated, so you can add the audio file to your PDF. And when they download so it. So students would click with the mouse, and then they would hear. Right. Okay. And even when I download it, I can click anywhere, and all those different chunks would come out, and I would hear what was so appropriate for the point. So you that? I did. Each paragraph is a chunk? Uh, well, not exactly. I tried. I tried. So there's a chunk here, and there's a chunk here, and there's a chunk there. Can I, can I go back and rework on these to put the missing information? Yes, that's the cool part. Writer. Right. If you're doing a PDF and you're putting it up to Canvas, no, that's kind of a final product. But if you're doing this where you're, um, you're uploading the material to your computer, yes, you can then listen to your audio file and then say, oh, gosh, that's why I missed that piece. I need to add that to my notes. And you can go right. in and type it, and it's going to come out looking. I could add it here. Typing it. Typing it. But I, once you put it to that PDF, you can't change it anymore. That would be a slice in time, if you will. Okay. So you do it when you're in that interface. And that interface comes automatically a, onto the computer when you set up the. the to, okay, when you do that. I can mm -hmm. put it up on Canvas and then write on top of that. No, you'd have to put it up right on top of it before you put it into Canvas. So you're going to finalize sure the picture first. Board, totally Unless you're using a smart board. Right. So we. You layers on layers. <laughs> Y'all are starting to talk. It's very good. I want to tell you some things about the cost. I think I'm going to talk more because I think that's kind of an exciting piece. So this has a lot of applications. It's between $120 and $140. Mm -hmm. That is certainly not price prohibitive for my world of assistive technology when I think of what I used to pay for a Kurzweil or some other of these yeah, technologies exactly. that were multiple thousands of dollars. So for students to be able to go to the bookstore and get this is beyond exciting. For you all in the classroom, um, right now, Derek um, and Mark have 11 pens that they will um, allow you to sign out for two weeks if you wanted to play with this idea and use it in the classroom and see how you can kind of connect it with Canvas and if it works for you all. Um, you know, certainly, I'm sure if this is something that works, this is one of those things that's just not going to break the bank if we want to kind of put them into place. So good news. How do you all think you could use this in the classroom? Straight lecture, obviously that one's an easy one. Well, we can write notes <coughs> before coming to the class. And, uh, Great idea. <coughs> bring it up on Canvas and then discuss those instead of writing in front of the class itself. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could definitely use it as just a writing tool that can be posted up to Canvas. So you could write your notes beforehand and then mm -hmm. bring it up. You can do that with SmartBoard as well, right? Yeah, you have to Smart. type it there. Unless okay, you have that's that true. Bad to write. Yeah. So we have a professor who has a student in his class do notes each week. Each week it's a different student. So if you think about giving them this pen and then they go up and they use this and then it's shared with everybody and you can hear the lecture and their notes, that that's just an enhancement to what's already going on. And what this teacher has already found is when this person writes the notes and that person is that really good note writer, everybody else is learning how to write notes. Mm -hmm. Because some sets of notes are more effective than others. And so it's a, a learning in a different level that's going on. And you're not sacrificing if the person has lousy notes, you still have the lecture. Well, uh, if you're using a smart board, the notes can anyway be PDF and Exactly. So can we use the pen just for recording and then? But you can't synchronize the two. The that would be harder to synchronize because you have two different kinds of applications. Right? Yeah. The other thing I'm thinking is today is my Look how I'm dressed. My students had to be dressed up, so I dressed my students. Uh, they had to do presentations today. And of course, I'm writing notes about, oh, this is a terrible slide. Or these recommendations are all marketing. This is a strategy class. You should have more. You know, the kind of feedback I will give them later. But it's kind of an interesting idea to me is that I could actually let them listen to their own voice. 
and see my notes. So that could go back as an assignment later. Well, yeah. And then they can go back. Yeah. Especially That's since a great a idea. Presentation to do a report later, so my feedback is going to be pretty critical to improving the report. It could be a lot of fun, actually. Mm -hmm. Student teaching practicum also. We yep. work the same yeah. concept, right? Like, that, oh, gosh, the, the, the student yeah. teacher and then the person in the back writing notes. And you can hear it as they're writing. Yeah. Oh, I can't you were talking imagine. about this and, you know. Yeah. And then they can hear themselves and then... And how critical it would be, even as, uh, going on that, the person who has, who did that, it, you, just having that feedback for myself to listen to before my professor came <laughs> in to, to see how I was doing my lessons and getting comfortable hearing myself, that would be a huge mm -hmm. learning tool for education. Think about group work. How could y'all use this group work? All my students could do that because they don't take minutes. They don't know about minutes. I explain about minutes, they don't know about minutes. They can practice and learn they and, and kind of and with the band, right? critique it. Somebody yesterday said that they um, had some difficulty knowing who was kind of performing in the group and who wasn't. And typically, there's always that person that comes and says, "This person isn't doing anything." And what she was thinking might uh, occur if she had the pens in all of the groups is she would be able to listen. And maybe it's someone's not contributing. Maybe it's someone's monopolizing the time. And she would have good teachable moments mm -hmm. on how to work effectively in a group format such as that. Um, we talked a little bit, we had someone um, yesterday who is in the biology department and his subject matter <coughs> seems to be something that's a little bit more challenging. I'm looking at nursing, <laughs> same type of situation. And to have the ability, and I'm thinking I work very closely with a lot of nurses, for them to be able to go back and hear that critical piece about the heart, because that's where in PD they fall short, that would be so amazing yeah. to hear the faculty explain it again and not just rely on the notes that could have something missing or just didn't incorporate everything that they needed to do. It's really neat when you're thinking about those technical classes as well. MIT has been um, telling their students that they have to have pens for almost a year now. So the student body is, is using them um, along the way and MIT has been using them in their classes as they go and it makes sense. Um, Caltech also is using the pens quite a bit. Those technical schools, those are easy applications to think of the gobload of information that's coming at you. And again, to have your faculty's lecture right there with your notes, that is going to kind of help with that speed of getting those concepts as you're going through it. Are there any legal issues? That came up last time too. Is it true? There would be, depending on your type of class. You know, and how you're formatting your lecture. If you're lecturing through something that you're going to be publishing, Later on, I can imagine those things might not be the best fit for the smart pen. These, the smart pen is going to work for some classes and not for others. There isn't a universal um, disclosure to tape at the university. Um, faculty typically will allow students to tape if they don't mind and let that be known. So many students are using their iPads and their iPhones and who knows who's taping what right. at this point in our, in our technological world. Is if you are recording the, <coughs> the lecture, you have to let the professor know. You're supposed to, absolutely. You're supposed to let the supposed to. know that you're recording, but not many people do, and you can't find out if their iPhone is on or some recording device is there. But this piece gives you the top, the ability to have a conversation. This is going to be recorded. Is anyone uncomfortable? We're going to do this in the next class, so if you are, email me. It'll be private. We can talk back and forth about what your concerns are, and I can make the decision on whether I use this in my class or not. So you're letting the students kind of think about it and come up with that solution. I have, um, way back years ago, before I came actually, so it's past about 15 years, we came up as a university with a disclosure form for students with disabilities who are recording classes. Back with the, when we had a faculty senate, they had made the decision that any student with a disability would need to have this contract signed by the faculty members and themselves saying that they would never use this for bad. They wouldn't go out on the street corner and sell it or anything of that nature. That's not such a bad idea because it raises the consciousness of it. So certainly you can all do something very simple and ask for that to be done. Um, ours is extraordinarily simple, um, but we do do it. And some of you may have seen it already. Many faculty tell them they don't need it. They're fine. You can tape. Others will ask for that to be signed and the student uses it. And I'll say that there's even others who will say only if we can put it up on Canvas. So you can take that recording and we can put it up on Canvas. And that's the only place that we'll see it is in Canvas, which is private. It's non-searchable, so you're not going to show up on Facebook. Um, which is a concern, you know, you may not want to be out in the public where uh, everything is there, especially if it's an idea that you're going to be publishing later. On Canvas, can we touch, can we do the same thing here, the audio by those chunks there? 
yes, well, the students would then have to download the, the, the file to, to their desktop, and then it would work. It's not going to open up and play audio right from Canvas. But downloadable. Yes. Yeah. I have two more questions. What's the capacity of this? It's on the back. Two gigabyte. This one says so two gigabyte. Two gigabyte. So in time, how, how long can it record? Uh, that's what we were trying to figure out. Uh, it is a lot of time. It, um, I think we have to actually go through like a day or two. It depends on how much time, you know, how much are you writing, what kind of note taker you are. It's really hard for us to predict, but I think that I could almost go a week. I'm going to try it and I'll let you know. Continuous. I'll try it, not continuous eight hours a day, but like yesterday I was in the meeting all day. I record continuously voice on this. How long can it record? I, oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'd have to ask Derek, and he stepped up, so we'll ask him why if the time's over. I'm curious. What kind of application are you thinking about? Twenty. Just curious. Students, they, they, they might not download the stuff, yeah. and oh, it's yeah. full, and they say, you know what, I can't take the lecture anymore. Oh, but they can remove things off of this, and yeah, that would be part of the management that the they would moment. have to do it. What I'm saying is, yeah, some kids do five classes. They showed up for class, class the end of the day, so that's going to be a little bit. So if they're doing five classes, then they I suspect you could go the whole day. Easily without that being a problem. The battery life is also critical. Is it rechargeable? Battery? Yes, it is. Yes, it is rechargeable. And you don't need a different cable. This cable can actually become so a USB right to your computer, so it could become a charger. Or USB to uh, USB to the like, a, yeah, like a, an I Apple charger. Can the sound audio file here be downloaded as a waveform? It'll go downloaded as an MP4. MP4. You can convert that to <coughs> Audacity or something and remove those clicks or. You could probably do that. You can play mm -hmm. the sound. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to. It's an MP4. You can do whatever you could. Right. So I could enhance the audio. You could. For those of you who are worried about the students not taking um, the information off, too, you could certainly kind of come up with some sort of piece, mm -hmm. a, a policy, if you will, of we're going to use the smart time. Part of your responsibility is. You're always going to have somebody who's going to forget what they're supposed to do. Most of the students, though, like you said, with a reminder of signing that contract, that's a nice reminder. Oh, yeah, I have to attend. I have to remember. These are my steps. So you can always kind of write that into your class to see where you're going with that. I don't like the grip of this. Well, it's got to have some room for all that technology. I know. This is my last one. Sure. Do you want them? He doesn't need any instructions. He doesn't need them. No. No, he already knows all the instructions. I'm sure they'll get there. Eliminate the sound of the writing. The scratching of the pen, there is something that we can buy that's an extension. Um, again, my student uses earbuds. Oh, okay. So there'll be a wire hanging out of the thing, but nonetheless, it'll be further. Yeah, it would. I will so also say. For note taking, you can certainly talk to the students about taking the notes closer to you, and that will certainly be a On the inside of one of these covers, <laughs> it talks about whether you're left handed or right handed in the smart oh, pen settings. And um, so for me, I don't know if it's in your version, but it's in mine. That seemed to help a little bit when I went online to ask about the scratching. So if you're a left-handed or a right-handed person, that seems to help a little bit when you're starting to do that, if it, if it knows that you're left-handed or right-handed. Now, whether you're a left-handed person, it comes up around the edge or it comes down here. I don't know if it yeah. applies to all different kinds of writing positions. But I did know that it did go down a little bit yesterday when I was starting to tell them that I was a left-handed writer. Okay. So it's a lot of This is about giving you a little taste and kind of an advertisement, if you will. Is an iPad app, app for this? There is an iPad app for this. There is. And that you can use it in, in some cases. Uh, not the version I have. I'm not sure if it's the version that you have. There is a version that works only with the iPad. And I don't have, I didn't get to play with that one. But if it, you know. We bought the Evos. Yeah. You know, and for, this is a real life pen, so even if you weren't recording, you could be writing with it, and you have great refills. They're very simple refills, and this comes with a refill. But again, this was really to get you guys thinking about this. If you wanted to work closely um, with either one of us, we can kind of work through some of the questions that you have if you're going to use it in the class, but I really thought that this was kind of a neat way for us to team up and talk to you guys about the smart pen. Let it kind of sit with you. Um, yesterday, someone came up to me at the end, and he had some really great ideas, and we're going to work over the summer on a project. Right. So it's, it's you know, we're here. <laughs> You're wanting to come. I'm happy to see it. So I teach writing, and this is a paper mm -hmm. from a student. Um, can I buy paper that will let me feed this through a copier, put the dot matrix underneath this? 
and then mark up this. I can't see. You know what? You know what wouldn't show up is the type that's on there, would it? No, the type would show up. I just don't know mm. if it's going to mess up the barcode system. I don't know if that would work because when you're printing it out, you're printing out the barcode paper first. If so, let's if you get the version like I have, you can print out the barcode paper on mm. your average laser dot printer. Let's say I print out that paper. Then what I'm thinking you're saying is I feed it back through so it can then print that onto it. Yes. That is going to depend on how this reads and whether it would read the way the laser printer then goes on to it. Um, the laser printer is really on with a series of dots, uh, whether it will look up as writing and, and work out. If not, you would have, you could hand back the paper to this person and be writing at this point, you said this and I'm thinking this and you could be circling right, the so points. It would, be like, it would be like writing on a clear plastic overlay. Overlay, over, over, right. Because it wouldn't show up. preserve any of the text that she It'll preserve every circle, every underline, Everything every scratch made. through that you go. Right. So you could make, on the paper, you could make a one, and then on your dot paper make a one and make your little I am, like, so uh -huh. onto your idea. Like, if, there, if you could, like, download in Canvas all the assignments, and it's then just definitely print them the trial. out on special paper, and then you could... Hand them back. That would be very powerful, so or just throw them back up. At the same time, say... This is the wrong use of the word. This is paragraph is way too long. Uh, you, yeah. Oh, I'm you know, the power of the voice when you're doing the assignments is huge. When we did the pilot for Canvas, the most compelling comment we got from a student was, I was reading all my teacher's comments. I thought she hated what I wrote. I thought she, I was doing really poorly in the class. She was going to drop out. And she said, then the lady gave me audio comments. I had no idea how positive she felt about the paper because I didn't hear her voice it made her rethink everything she was doing and she stayed in the class. So if you could include that, I know that that would be powerful. But then again, that student either is going to need the pen to access that or you're going to have to download the, or do the papers. Or create the PDF. Right. You'd have to create the PDF. But it's doable. Might be definitely worthwhile. Definitely worth a try. I'm happy to have you come print it out at my laser printer and see if it works. Let us know. It might just be finding the right printer to use it on. We also could probably call the company, and we can right. probably I could probably ask here them and troubleshoot. Yeah, Again, we're, we're, we're that's the next uh, the next path if you ask me. All of the new devices that are coming out, all of the new ways in which we can look towards inclusive education, it, it, it's not again about accommodation. Students with disabilities that use technology are using technology that we're all using now. Deaf, the deaf community is where we got texting. There's so many mm -hmm. ways in which we have seen our history come from that space. That is really good educational benefit to all students, and we could again, you, we could brainstorm probably for another 30 minutes. Right. What types of learners in a variety of different realms that could use this pen? But again, it's it's neat. It's one step towards again working in that format. Thank you for yeah. you know, participating as you all did, and if you have other questions, we'll be here later. Thank you. And you do have to leave the pens. I do have to say that. You don't get to keep the pens we today. We tried to get them so we could give it to you. But it yeah, that's what I thought. I thought we were going to get a pen. No. We wish. You can get a pen. But you when can check it out. The bookstore has the pens. I was there on Monday. They don't have them now, but at the beginning of school, they will have them. If you want them, you can order them. It takes them like a day to get. They're available at Staples. You can get them from Best Buy, or you can sign them out from the CTI. Great. Yeah. But it is a great time to be thinking about it for next semester. That was our hope, too. Being in yeah, December, no, you're now going to be true. working towards January. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.